Our readings this morning is taken from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, and we will read from verses 11 to 16. The Lord appears to Solomon. When Solomon had finished the temple of the Lord and the royal palace, and had succeeded in carrying out all he had in mind to do in the temple of the Lord and in his own palace, the Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayers and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. When I shut up the, the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever and ever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. This is the word of the Lord. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus and Savior. I can't remember a time in my life and also in our beloved country that forced us to lock down due to any disaster. And as we have seen how many people in a short space of time has been infected with the COVID-19 pandemic. It drove many of us into total fear. And after Solomon dedicated the temple, the Lord appeared to him and gave him some warnings, but also reassurances. In verses 12 to 13, he says, The Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people. You see, these verses is tied up with Israel and the temple and the fact that from time to time God might send judgment upon the land in the form of drought, locusts or pestilence. In the next verse we see God address his own when he says, my people called by my name. People who have identified themselves with God and his work. His people speaking about is the people who call themselves saved or Christians. Indeed, God warned the people that their disobedience to his word and commands would bring with it dire consequences. And therefore, he says in verse 13, I will devour the land and send plague among my people. You see, now he sets forth the conditions necessary to reverse his judgment and to bring renewal, resurrection, and healing. Verse 14 says, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Yes, what great promises. My question, is the coronavirus real? And the answer is yes. Is the regular flu real? The answer is yes. Is the God of this universe, which is the first and the last, is he real? Yes, a thousand times yes. You see, the government and medical fraternity can help us physically through all the safety regulations, washing of hands, keeping distance, no handshakes, etc. But only God, who is real, can help with the physical and spiritual healing. Second Chronicles 7, 13 to 14 says to our crisis today, notice, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour it, the land or send pestilence amongst my people. In our case, the COVID-19, God, God says in verse 14, if my people, which include me and you, the church universal, who are called by my name, 
will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Hear the promise, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Isn't that what we're looking forward to? You see, there is no command in these words of God to rebuke the devil. Instead, the command is getting right to getting right with God. And how do we do that? How can we rectify our mistake and sin? And the instructions is clear when he says to humble ourselves, to pray, to see God, and to turn from our wicked ways. You see, the lack of these things is what opened the door for the problem of where we find ourselves in the first place. It's like we open the door by our wicked ways and neglect of our relationship with God. But we also close the door by turning from our wicked ways and seeking God so we can make it right. Turn around. Instruction number one, humble ourselves. And this word has the idea of being under another. When we humble ourselves to the Lord, we're basically acknowledging his lordship and headship in our lives. Acknowledging that I am under new management. We are admitting our weakness and reaching out for his power. We are saying, I can't, but God, you can. To humble ourselves also deals with the area of pride. Yes. And the word pride in the Old Testament means to rise or to swell up. It speaks of me and you thinking more of ourselves and our abilities than that of God. Pride says, I do not need God. I can make my own way. I know best. I call the shots. I do it my way. But God called us this morning when he said we must pray. It is in essence, prayer is show of humility in action. Because the praying person sees his own inability and recognizes God's ability. Prayer says to God, I can't, but you can. And indeed, our Lord Jesus Christ this morning on this Sabbath want to share with us and also want to deal with us how we can go forward. And it's my prayer that the Lord will help us and purpose elsewhere that we really consult with him first. It's a world that it's a sign that we are hunger for him more than for what he can do. If you had to be really honest today, and I'm asking myself, what is my number one priority at this point? Is it my job? Is it my bank account? Is it my retirement? Is it my family? Is it my fear to die? Is it my church? Is it my spouse or my hobby? Or is it the Lord? You see, when anything but God is the number one, our spiritual priorities are out of balance. When God is our first priority, the things he cares about are the things that we will care about. When we are seeking his face, we will be able to see what he has attended to do for us. And what his attention is to be, that which will also become our attention. He wants us to love in the same way as he loves. He wants us to hate the things that he hates. He wants us to do the things that he does. He wants us to be like Christ in flesh. And therefore the call for repentance, to turn from our wicked ways. And God wants us to stop sinning. We are to examine our lives, identifying anything that does not please the Lord or line up with his word. We, me and you, are to eliminate that from our lives, all the bad and the ugly. It sounds harder than it is, because as we humble ourselves, pray and seek his face, our sin will become increasingly clear, and it won't be that easy to make that U-turn. And that is, they are to forsake their sins and embrace holiness. And while we are locked up, let us reflect on where we have gone wrong. Do we drink? Do we steal? 
Do we still lie? Do we still cheat? Do we commit adultery? Do we engage in sexual activity outside of marriage? Do we carry hate in our heart? Do we walk in pride? Do we walk in, in hypocrisy? Do we drag the precious name of our Lord Jesus through the mud? If we are guilty, let's repent and turn from our wicked ways. God cannot and will not bless a mess like that. We are saved by grace, but grace is never a license to sin. And as we are in Lent and lockdown, may this be our season of repentance. God's promise, if we meet his requirements, he says God will hear us. Sin in this prayer. But Psalm 66 verse 18 says, If I had sinned in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. However, when sin is taken care of, prayer can flow unhinded and from the throne of God. God will help us. God also promised to forgive our sins. And this means that not only is the prayer line restored, but it means that we can be in fellowship with him again. Nothing in this world compares with being able to have close communion with God Almighty. Something to think about during lock, uh, lockdown. God also promised that he will heal us. You see, the Lord promised to them is that repentance equals reign in the time of Solomon. If they will honor him, he will also honor them. If they will open their hearts, he will in turn open the heavens. That was God's promise. In a sense, where we find ourselves as, as a country and a world, we are basically in the same situation. Our repentance will equal healing from this coronavirus. Our homes, healing from our communities and nations. And all these have been devastated through this coronavirus and are indeed of spiritual blessing and power from above. But you see, the first step to healing is submitting to God. And James 4 verse 7 says, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I'm concluding my message today with something I received uh, during this week on WhatsApp as they're giving us a breakdown of, of the word lockdown. And I want to give this to you and to all of us as we go into this new week. The L stands for listen to God's voice and reflect, a sign of let go and let God. The O, obey his word and his teachings. The C, call on Jesus' name and his teachings. The K, know what is the purpose of all this. The D is to dwell in his presence. The O is to offer a prayer for everyone's safety. The W is to wait and be patient. This too shall pass. The N, nurture our personal relationship with him. And he promised Israel that he would hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. It's my prayer. And I receive that blessing and that promise from God for us as a country, that God will hear, God will forgive, and God will heal. That is exactly what we need now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.